Brett Hornby here, back with another Calgary Flames take here. I've been a little late on getting into my take on the Calgary Flames and what they've done on Create and Frenzy between the Canada Day weekend. You can see my videos on my channel, all the activities I took part in with the Calgary Stampeders game, and uh, I started a new segment, my Stampeders, Calgary Stampeders this month, and uh, took in the fireworks show on the uh, July 1st in the evening, and so happy Canada Day, and if Americans are happen to watch this video, happy 4th of July, which as a recording tomorrow was Independence Day for American friends. Anyway, I'm just going to summarize what the Calgary Flames have done so far in Freeze and Frenzy, and they definitely uh, are continuing on making changes this off season after underachieving this past season and not making the playoffs and the big thing that if you read the Flames watch and read any clips from the Calgary Flames especially Brad Sherlivan, the general manager on Flames TV where he goes on about that we relied too much on too few mostly being up, up front with our top line but our scoring depth definitely was a, a problem in the last season so definitely going to summarize all the players that we have signed, and including uh, Big Fish, which we'll get to at the end here. But uh, let's grab a notes here. We definitely uh, picked up a few players here. I mean, the first player that we picked up, which if you read the local media and any you know rumor sites, I go to HockeyBuzz.com just for partly entertainment, but some of it is uh, some of the rumors are actually warranted and makes sense and not just stuff that you read in the National Choir at the grocery store but uh, the first guy that Calgary signed like right at 10 o'clock on which I, I'm in the mountain time zone which is 10 o'clock is when free agency starts on Canada Day is uh, Senator Derek Ryan he's uh, an American and he's 31 years old and he's undrafted and uh, first he uh, he actually spent some time with the Spokane Chiefs and the the Western Rocket League, that's where he's from, and he actually played in Alberta for the U of A Golden Bears and spent some time in Austria and uh, Sweden before gaining attention of uh, the Carolina Hurricanes organization. So another former Carolina Hurricane is coming to the Calgary Flames. He also played for Bill Peters, but uh, I like this uh, move for Derek Ryan to, you know, solidify our bottom six forwards. I mean, he... Uh, in his NHL career, he's played 153 games and he's put in 20 goals, 41 uh, assists, 69 points for 52 penalty minutes. Including this past season, he for the Carolina Hurricanes, he uh, he played 80 games, scored 15 goals, 23 assists, 38 points for in total, and then he had 28 penalty minutes, and then he signed a three-year deal. In total, worth 9.375 million, which comes to a 3.125 million cap hit. And I'm going to say, considering, let's say Matt Staten, who was a fourth line center, playing with a couple grinders, uh, we were paying that guy uh, four and a half or three and a half million. Basically, the whole time he's been a flame. I, I definitely say he's a. Uh, Definitely an upgrade there because I personally think all the unrestricted free agents that the Flames had, they're, I think they're moving on from them as I go down this list. And I definitely feel they've been upgrading their uh, bottom six forwards and definitely the wings. And as I mentioned, Derek Ryan's a center, but uh, he's also very versatile when playing on the wings, which uh, if you uh, watched any of the clips from Flames TV with Brad Trelevin, he definitely stressed about we got centers that could play the wings and he said it's much easier to have a center who could play the wings as opposed to a wing who could play center. But another guy that they uh, signed for some depth, I haven't heard much about this guy, I mean, especially he played out east, is Austin Zarnick, who's uh, another center. He's an American, he's 25 years old. He played his college hockey with, in Miami and he was all spent time in the Boston Bruins organization. In his NHL totals, he's only played 59 games, scored 5 goals, 12 assists, 17 points for 12 penalty minutes. 
but this guy definitely uh, could provide some fourth line depth for the Flames, but I think he definitely will help the stop and eat, because last year with the Providence Bruins, who is their AHL team, he scored uh, in 69 games, he scored 25 goals, 44 assists for uh, 69 points and 24 penalty minutes. No playoffs, but he signed actually a two-year deal with two and a half million or one point two five million dollar cap it one way. So I definitely could say he's uh, here for organizational depth. He can probably play both the odd game with the Flames and and the Stockton Heat because he's definitely proven he can score at the AHL level. But some players they they seem to have no problem doing it at the AHL level, but then get to the NHL level and and just uh, can't seem to do it there. But Maybe this is a new opportunity for us in Zarnik, and uh, I say the price is right and the risk is low. But got to remember too, with the free agent frenzy, is that you're trying to build up uh, your farm team as well, and it never hurts to have organizational depth in case you know if you have injuries and whatnot, or someone signs, and this sign will look good in the future. And then another guy that who's already been with the organization. His name is Dalton Prout. He's a defenseman. He's 28. He's a Canadian. He was drafted in 2010, 154th overall by the Columbus Blue Jackets. And he also spent some time with the, the New Jersey Devils organization. And actually, we, we, we acquired Dalton Prout in the Eddie Lack trade when it was clear that Eddie Lack wasn't working out for the Flames as their backup goalie. And, with the tandem of David Riddich and uh, John Gillies last year. Eddie Lack was very, very uh, expendable and felt that we needed a move and we always can use some depth on defense, either both of the Flames or the uh, Stockton Heat or the NHL, AHL farm team for the Flames. He didn't play any games for the Flames last season, but last year in the AHL he played 34 games. He had two goals. 7 assists, 9 points for 42 penalty minutes. And in his career in the NHL, he's actually played 242 games, only scored 6 goals, 30 assists, 36 points with 306 penalty minutes. So he's definitely uh, a hard nosed defenseman that uh, no one wants to face. And as sometimes he's said, he's not, he's not brighter to score goals. He also has two playoff games with the Columbus Blue Jackets with zeros across the board there. So I mean he's definitely uh, got some mileage on both the AHL and NHL. I feel that Dalton Prout will be just a spare defenseman kind of like uh, a Matt Barkowski was this past season and a couple seasons if need be. If we either got to bring someone in to bring in some toughness for a divisional rival or you know injuries but I would say it never hurts to have any depth. And then the, the next three guys I'm going to go over, yeah, I think all these guys are primarily signed to bring the organizational depth in the stock to need before we get to the uh, the big fish here. So the first guy that they signed, his name was Tyler Grovek. He's a forward who's a center who also can play the wings. He's 25 years old, Canadian. Originally he was drafted in 2011, 191st overall by the Minnesota Wild. All I can say with him is that he's played most recently five games in the Washington Capitals, so he won't have his name on the cup because he didn't make any didn't play any games. Or he didn't play at all in the playoffs this past season. He just signed a one-year deal. It's a two-way contract with a $650,000 cap hit, or he'll make at least $350,000, which I still say is a pretty good living, even if you don't make it to the show. But it's just more organizational depth for the Stockton Heat. And another guy that we signed was Alan Quain. He's also a forward center who can also play the wings, which that's definitely a theme that uh, the Flames are looking after in free agency. He's a Canadian. He actually got drafted twice. Originally in 2011, he was drafted 81st or 85th overall by the Detroit Red Wings. But then sometimes if you don't play or sign with their organization, after two years of getting drafted, you can get be eligible to re-enter the draft two years later, and that's exactly what happened with him. And in 2013, he was drafted 166th overall, 
by the New York Islanders, and that's the, the NHL team he's most recently played for. He played 21 games with the New York Islanders. Once again, uh, this is a two-way contract. Only one year. $700,000 cap hit for a salary, AHL salary of $400,000. I, I personally think he's just going to be here for organizational depth for the Stockton Heat because uh, Calgary's definitely brought in some uh, forwards here right now as, as well uh, with uh, all the forwards that we have already signed. He's definitely here for competition and for organizational depth. And then the last forward we signed was a right winger named Buddy Robinson. He's an American. He was undrafted, just like uh, Derek Ryan and Austin Cernick. But he actually he spent the last three seasons with the Ottawa Senators organization, and he only played a, a handful of games. And I think I saw he scored a goal and picked up a couple assists. But this is just over a couple seasons with the the Ottawa Senators organization. But he spent more time in Binghamton, their their AHL team. And he signed actually a two-year, two-way contract. The total contract is 1.4 million, or with a cap hit of 700,000, he'll most likely make 675,000 with his AHL contract. All these numbers that I'm getting is from the Cap Friendly website, which is pretty much the go-to site for everybody, sports writers, hockey fans alike who uh, want to find out how the contracts work out for certain players and teams and vice versa. Hey, let's get to the big fish that the Calgary Flames signed, and I'm actually pleasantly surprised that uh, they went after a big fish here. They weren't in the John Terreras sweepstakes, who was the biggest fish in the NHL free agency, and you now be, be a little sarcastic here, in case you haven't heard, he signed with the Toronto Maple Leafs after all, seven year for $77 million for $11 million a year. But for day, after day one of the free agency, apparently the Flames were on with this guy, and the other guy that they were on with was James Van Riemsdyk, but uh, he ultimately decided to go back to Philadelphia, and if I'm not mistaken, he signed a, a five-year deal worth $35 million or $7 million a season. But the one guy that they picked up and actually... I'm cautiously excited about this move is James Neal, the right winger. He'll be 31 at camp this year. He's a Canadian. Originally, he was drafted in 2005, 33rd overall by the Dallas Stars. He's definitely uh, a proven scorer. Every season has been in the NHL. He's scored at least 20 goals, which is definitely something that the, the Flames badly needed because we were the third or fourth lowest scoring team in the league, and you think after Sean Monaghan and Johnny Goudreau and we pretty much tailed off and if they're injured or not in the lineup we definitely were cold during the, down during the stretch but James Neal he started his career at the Dallas Stars and then he went on to the Pittsburgh Penguins and uh, National Predators and surprisingly the National Predators did not protect him in the uh, expansion draft so, his, so he played this past season with the Vegas Golden Knights and uh, well, another thing you could say about James Neal is that he definitely is going to provide a lot of experience both in regular season and playoffs for the Flames, which definitely can come in handy for all the young guys that we still have and recently acquired who haven't even been to the show. But over his NHL career, James Neal has played 703 games. He scored 263 goals, 230 two assists for 499 points I got. So the next point he'll get will be 500, which will be with these guys. And he's also got 530 penalty minutes, so not only he provides some uh, scoring touch, he can also provide some sandpaper, which definitely uh, we gave up in the W. Hamilton trade when we traded away Michael Furlan. But imagine having James Neal and Matthew Kachuk on the same team. That's very intriguing for Flames fans, but uh, maybe not so for our opponents. And another key thing about James Neal is that he's staying right here in the Pacific Division, so maybe he'll have a thing against uh, the Vegas Golden Knights for not letting him, not keeping him. 
But I say, speaking of the Vegas Golden Knights, last year with the Vegas Golden Knights, he's played 71 games. He scored 25 goals, 19 assists for 44 points and 24 penalty minutes. And then over his career, he's actually played in 100 playoff games exactly for 31 goals, 24 assists, 55 points, and 92 penalty minutes. And actually the last two years, he's been to the Stanley Cup Finals. Mind you, on the wrong end of the Stanley Cup Finals. But that definitely is going to provide some uh, hunger for him to maybe finally get over to the top and definitely provide some experience to the young guys on how tough it is to get to the Stanley Cup Finals. Actually, the Flames currently do have two guys on the team that do have a playoff ring. Um, Michael Froelich, who actually won the Stanley Cup with the uh, Chicago Blackhawks in 2013. Well, actually, no, 2010, I believe. And uh, Troy Brower won the Stanley Cup with the Chicago Blackhawks in 2013. And I, I think, I think Froelich won the Cup in the earlier. But both of those guys have, do have cup rings with the Chicago Blackhawks in those years. But in the playoffs, getting back with James Neal here, in the 20 games that he played in, he scored six goals, five assists for 11 points, and 12 penalty minutes. So the only thing I'm, I'm cautiously excited about James Neal is the fact that we signed him for five years at, in total for $28.75 million for a cap hit of $5.75 million, which that's the nature of the beast of free agency, but uh, I think maybe that's the market right now because there are reports that apparently the Vegas Golden Knights were offering 5-5 five, five, as in five-year deal for $5 million a year, so the Flames paid a little more, and apparently there was a, a lot of other teams that were kicking tires on him, and yeah, definitely will fit a need here. I can maybe even see him going up on the front line with, uh, you know, Sean Monaghan and Johnny Goudreau. I mean, I put Elias Lindholm there after the Dougie Hamilton trade, but I just, there was some speculation or somewhere on the street that the Flames were kicking tires or just speculation on the, uh, you know, they were going after him. But the fact that we actually got him, I mean, it looks good right now in the short term. And I would say if, if the Flames can... You know, not only make the playoffs, I'm thinking we did, with all the signs we've made, we, this team better be making the playoffs with uh, building up our depth on forward. And I still think we are pretty solid in defense. And if Mike Smith can still play uh, strong in net, depending on what they decide to do with backup, but at worst we have a couple of younger backups who have got some NHL experience. I mean, Bill Peters definitely has a lot of options at his disposal for him and his coaching staff. So yeah, I'm just right now I'm cautiously excited about James Neal. I mean this could be a contract that we might look at towards the end depending on how the Flames did the next five seasons. It's going to look pretty expensive when he gets to 35, 36 years old but right now it's looking good and after day one of free agency he was the biggest fish that was still left on July 2nd. The other awards that uh, James Neal had was he he went to the Young Stars game in 2009 and been to three All-Star games in 2012, 2016, and 2018. Then he was named an NHL All-Star in 2011-12. I think that was the year that he had 40 goals, so who knows, maybe we can get 30 goals out of James Neal for the Flames. So, anyway, the last thing we'll close it up with, going back to Cap Friendly, is that the Flames do have $66.6 .6 million dollars spent at the cap right now, which equates to $12.9 million in cap space, which uh, is looking good right now in terms of contracts. I mean, they got 18 out of 23 known contracts to fill out the roster. And in the organization, they have 35 out of 50 contracts, and then they put a reserve that Calgary has 55 out of 90. But the one thing that, uh, that still has to be determined is that we have a bunch of restricted free agents that still need to be signed, that's going to take up a lot of that space, and I mean, we still have to sign Elias Lindholm that we recently acquired from Carolina Hurricanes, and we qualified Garnet Hathaway, who's definitely he's a great fourth-line plugger, but maybe he'll have to fight harder to keep his job with all the signs we have, and definitely uh, we got to sign Mark Jankowski, who had 17 goals in his rookie season, and 
and definitely uh, he's not the next Joe and Newendike, and he definitely was drafted a little high, but it's good that it, we finally uh, stayed patient with him and kept him in the organization. Then on defense, we still got to sign newly acquired Jonah Anafin, and Brett Kulak definitely deserves a, he's definitely proven he could be an everyday NHLer. Then on the farm, plus our goalies, we have to decide on signing David Riddich and John Gillies, who I personally think we need to keep them both in the organization just because of an aging Mike Smith, but I think I'm not too sure who you're going to have as a backup between those two. I think David Riddich is the slightly better backup over John Gillies, but they're both worth still keeping in the organization or maybe platooning them in Stockton so they're all not just sitting behind the bench or there's still a possibility that maybe Calgary will sign a, a proven backup so that Mike Smith isn't playing, you know, 60-plus minutes a game. And then the other guys that we decided to qualify who've been AHL depth guys is Hunter Shinkarik and Morgan Klimchuk. So anyway, that's definitely uh, a lot to take in on my uh, take on the Flames on for Agent Frenzy. I just say to summarize, I I definitely like the moves that the Flames have made in terms of uh, addressing some depth on the forwards, especially on the wings, and definitely got some guys who have some flexibility, as what Brad Trelevin says, and uh, I'm just saying the fourth line is definitely going to be a lot better once everything is said and done, and I still like the uh, Dougie Hamilton trade on getting in Elias Hinnom and going to half and then to uh, get a more complete defenseman and more scoring up front, and I still personally am happy with the Bill Peters hire, who I think he's the right the right guy with the right personality, and, and I enjoy the coaching staff that he assembled with uh, Jeff Ward and Ryan Huska, which are a couple of guys that I looked at potentially being head coaches, uh, either to fill for the Flames or they were favored to be head coaches at one time. So right now this off season is looking great. So anyway, if you enjoy everything I put on my sports takes, uh, hit, hit like and subscribe, especially this and all my other uh, videos I post with my travels or the activities I take in and. Does that the Flames do anything else major in the off season? I'll jump in front of the camera and also stay tuned for my Calgary Stampeders this month takes at the end of the month. I'll talk to Stampeders and uh, obviously I'll talk Roughnecks and Hitmen if I find something that's worth jumping the camera for. Anyway, I'll see you at the next video.